Hey everybody, this is Senor Smoke from the Ring of Fire in Westchester County. Today's hot take is going to be analyzing a DCS outdoor kitchen that um, is found on their website. It's quite a lovely kitchen. I actually question whether this is in somebody's uh, yard or it's in some DCS designer showroom somewhere. But um, it's very, very pleasing to the eye. So we're going to look at it. We're going to see what actually makes sense on this island and what doesn't make sense. So... The, um, I measured it out, uh, at least based on the product. It's, it has 18 feet of product, which to my eye tells me this is about a 25-foot straight run. Love the usage of um, uh, wood in the back over there. Hope that's far. Uh, that is, uh, they've got the, create, uh, they've got the uh, proper clearance uh, that you need. We're, we're always looking for a foot off the back of the grill from any combustible surface. And uh, that's probably the reason why that they have that uh, looks like a stainless steel riser directly behind the grill because that is where the grill exhales from. All that heat, all that smoke's coming out from that back area. Um, moving from left to right, they have the kegerator with a dual tap system. Looks like they're, they're uh, pouring Stella, one of my favorites. I don't know what the brown one is, but uh, I'd probably be hitting that Stella pretty hard. Um, next door, we have the BC25 beverage chiller. Can also be a sink, but with the uh, lack of a faucet in this picture, it looks like they're just using it as a beverage chiller with a speed rail in the front to place your favorite libations to mix with. Um, underneath it, they have a storage draw. I'd kind of question uh, why they would put that over there, but uh, that storage draw, which is a TDT120, is usually what I put underneath... Um, uh, a Kamado when we built in, we build those in, and with the Kamado, we're going to uh, put our various grill grippers, uh, ashters, gloves, other tools. Um, so I don't really like the way this looks. It's too small underneath that piece. Um, moving to the right, we have the ice maker. Um, then we have the DP142 dry storage, which is a great piece, 42 inches. Cannot be placed under the grill. It's too tall. So it stands alone in a run, and it looks great. Um, we then have a Series 948 grill, the BE148RC. And what they did is they extended it to 54 inches. With the You'll see on the left-hand side, they have the uh, storage box. So that was a strategic decision by DCS because they knew since their grill was 48, they don't make a 54, so they were losing a lot of replacement business because many of the other brands have 54 as their big size. Viking, Lynx, Twin Eagle, I think Fire Magic does as well. So DCS realized, hey, we're not going to move off our 48-inch 48 foot, 48 footprint, but what we will do is we'll have a storage component. It's useful. That'll then uh, take this thing to fit into the 54-inch hole. Now we can pick up replacement business. Underneath it, you see the 48-inch draw system, one of my favorite, uh, most popular pieces to sell. That's going to be the ADR248. And uh, uh, continuing to move along, we have the, it looks like a 30-inch half griddle, half side burner. I don't like this piece, so I'll get into that in a second. Underneath that is a warming draw. And then finally, we finish the run off with a, uh, a dual trash draw. Now, um, I'm looking at this island from a functional standpoint. I'm saying to myself, where is the gas piped in? We have two gas components. That's the grill and that's the, uh, the side burner griddle. So where is the gas shut off? It's certainly not where the warming draw is. And it, you could do it in the draw system, it's a little tricky and has got to be planned for in advance because when you pull out that right side draw, I mean, that thing can double as a trash bin. I don't recommend doing that. But what you'll see is if you pull that right side draw out, there is going to be a little bit of space on the right-hand side. And then there's also going to be space in the back to stub up a gas line. So I'm going to assume that's what they would do if this was a real-world scenario. We have done it before. But, um, you know, if you want unencumbered access to your gas shutoff, you always want to use an access door so you have ample room to get in there and shut things off. Um, to the point of the, um, uh, the, 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 the lack of usefulness, um, the lack of you, to the point of the lack of usefulness of the griddle and side burner piece, this is what I would have done. They, they have some very nice DCS 
has some very nice uh, specialty cooking pieces now. They have a power burner, and they also have a 30-inch old griddle. I certainly would have used one of those two. This thing is just, it just doesn't work. First of all, the griddle is the same size as the griddle you can use, to, you can insert inside the grill. So why take the real estate up by having a thing that's embedded into your island right now when you could use it in your grill? Secondly, the side burner, double side burner, I am not a proponent of side burners at this point. I am a power burner fan. The reason is real estate. There are many types of cooking vessels whose diameter is, is just, it's too wide that when you put them on a double side burner, they are going to hang off and then the pot is not going to heat efficiently, all right? Now, if you are on the mind that you're going to go back to like your old Weber grill and put the onions or the beans and things of that nature and cook those on the side burners, well, that's fine because you're using a small little pot. But most people that I'm talking to, and these are folks that are grilling outside 10 months out of the year, they want those burners to be far more functional because they're doing far more funky things there with larger diameter cooking vessels. You can't use a double side burner. You got to go with the power burner. Or we have a new wave of, of cooking enthusiasts who are very into flat top grilling. And so in that case, they would use the all griddle flat top, which is an awesome, awesome piece. Um, don't have a lot of experience with the DCS warming dry. We've sold a number of them. To me, that's for somebody who's going to be doing a lot of entertaining, and that's when that would come into play. Um, um, I don't have a problem with the layout of this island. Um, I mean, I usually like my trash drawer right next to my grill, but in this case, it's only one set of items away, not a biggie. Um, I do like the fact that they put the cold, they separated cold from hot. So the kegerator, which is going to obviously get a lot of play, that's way off to the left. We're not going to impede or interrupt the griller who's working with a hot surface. I don't know if they're going to, in this situation, because that kegerator could also second as a refrigerator. Don't know if any kids are involved, sippy cups, juices, et cetera, et cetera. That could go in there as well. Um, we keep them away from the hot grill. So that's my take on this. It's quite striking, beautiful, um, functional for the most part. A couple of pieces I would have changed in there. But um, I think it's something nice to review and study and see if it works for you. If there are any questions, please hit me up, questions at rofgrills.com. We aim to please. Thank you.